Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. If we can stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, if we can do roll call, then, uh, or should I do it the other way around? Um, is, can I call Cambria as part of the roll call? Okay, it's going to do roll call. Uh, You're not going to be voting or anything before. No, <laughs> no. Commissioner Miles? Present. Commissioner Elson? Here. Newly uh, appointed Commissioner Weingart? I'm here. <laughs> Vice Chair Janowski? Here. And Chair Casisa? Here. Uh, um, note that um, uh, Commissioner Phipps, Commissioner Engstrom, and Commissioner Blomgren are not here at this time. Thank you. Uh, if everybody's okay, I'm going to move 6.1 swearing in of new youth commissioner up so Rebecca can like leave on time, and this way she can be more involved. Thank you. Welcome, Cambry. We're very excited to be able to swear in a new Parks and Recreation Youth Commissioner this evening. How do you read off of that? Okay. Um, please stand. Ooh. And repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Cambry Weingart. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. The duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. We're going to take a 15 second break just to do a photo op. We don't get many opportunities. Here, we'll stick you in the middle. Oh, there you go. Oh, in the middle. Okay. How <laughs> <laughs> <feel> important is this? <laughs> All right. Say something. Uh, Jeez. Commission? Politically <laughs> controversial. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Supreme Court? <laughs> just kidding. Thanks, Thanks guys. Mario. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're back Kavanaugh. in. I told you it's good. Yeah. Uh, open time for public discussion. Is anybody here from the public that wishes to speak on something that's not on the agenda? And if you wish to, if you can, um, when you get to speak, if you can give your name, address, and then you're also going to need a microphone because we're actually recording tonight. Oh, is this on? Yep. Yeah, that's on. Okay. Go ahead, Carla. Yeah. And I live at 5132 Paradise Drive, and I'm on the task force of the Intergenerational Center, and um, also president of Age Friendly Solutions, which is a 501c3. Um, Thank you. Um, for which we solicit for donations that have carried us through since our opening day on uh, April 30th. Um, there are a few things I wanted to report on. First of all, we're approaching now 150 members, people that have joined from either this community or outside of Corte de Madera um, that actively participate in the programs. And I wanted to pass out to you to see what our special event is, um, we are, we'll say, sponsoring it, um, although it's, you don't have to be a member to attend this. And what it is is paint and sip. And if you're familiar with that, 
you know what it's about. But if you're not, um, we have wonderful, talented artist, Deborah Maddox, who is a Corte Madera resident. She has also um, been commissioned by Sausalito uh, Art Festival for work that she's done. Uh, one year she um, produced the poster that they sold. Um, she's just a tremendous artist. And so she will be teaching everyone that attends to go home knowing how to paint like Henri Matisse. And she guarantees it. She does this on a regular basis at Corinthian Yacht Club. And there is a $45 registration fee. And um, that includes the class, all the materials, your beautiful painting that you're going to be able to take home and hang on the wall when the class is over. And it starts at 6.30 in the evening. And um, I'm trying to say, okay, 6.30 in the evening uh, to 8.30 in the evening. But if you're not finished, Deborah will stay. And so you're just asked to bring your favorite beverage, and we will provide snacks to keep you invigorated through this. And so it's going to be on Tuesday, October 9th. Then the other thing that I want to tell you that I'm so excited about is we are officially opening our makerspace. We um, got the equipment. It was set up this past Thursday, this coming Thursday. We're going to really fine tune everything and set up some storage areas. And that is open to anybody, any age. It's going to be every Thursday from 3.30 till 5.30. So the kids can come after school. Adults can come. Whoever might be free. Um, we are very fortunate to have um, the gentleman that designs and builds the exhibits for uh, the Exploratorium in San Francisco. And he will be the teacher every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30. And it just requires a membership um, into uh, the uh, Age-Friendly Intergenerational Center. Um, teens are, their parents are requested to uh, submit some sort of donation or membership, but um, it is not a requirement for the teens because we're really trying to get teens involved. And Camry, you just <laughs> don't know what you got yourself into, but we would love for you to um, get some involvement to see what is in the Intergenerational Center, because our whole purpose is to mix all ages together. For example, um, we have a 91-year-old lady that reads to preschoolers, and they just adore her. And then we have another lady that's in her 70s that on another day reads to the preschoolers. And we get about uh, 20 to 25 kids um, every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's so cute. Um, then next year, um, I was delighted. You know, I, we're getting all this funded, um, and we pay. All the teachers are paid um, through grants. And I applied uh, for one and got more than I asked for. And so we have enough money right now that we will be able to just charge for the membership, um, and then all the classes will be free. If you have a membership, they're free for all of 2019. So we've got enough to pay for all our wonderful teachers. Um, the other thing uh, just I wanted to mention, from when I was here before, um, it was uh, brought up about the potential for pickleball uh, court, and I talked to Mario about it, you know, and basically it was just to lay down tape or whatever. So we would love to, in some way, um, partner 
um, age-friendly intergenerational center would like to partner with the Park and Rec Commission to get this going. Um, also, the bocce ball court was suggested, and that met with much enthusiasm from our group. And so I'm going to continue to try to get grant funding so that we can partner together. And this is a lot more costly than masking tape on the floor. But um, we would really like to see that because really people just end up going to Albert's Park. So anyway, I invite you to um, check our website, which is age, wait a minute, I've got it. It's what? Age Friendly Center. Right, agefriendlycenter.org. And to see the schedule, we have activities going every day concurrently. We're finally going to get the accordion doors, so we'll be able to even have more things going. And uh, that should be here hopefully in a, a month or so. Uh, so at any rate, I just wanted to you know, give you that information. And we would like, we're putting in this big plea, if on next door, the age-friendly intergenerational center can be identified as its own entity. Right now, it just comes under park and rec department, which is fine. We still consider ourselves under that umbrella. But people who are looking for intergenerational uh, center activities can't get them because it just says park and rec. So um, if you could put in a plug for us for that, it would be much appreciated. Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Where is this? Like, where are you located? <clears throat> OK. We are on the side of the rec center, just opposite Cafe Verde. And you'll see at our front door is our iconic pencil bench. And I'll pass <laughs> these out. You can see it's our logo. And right at the pencil bench is the door to the Intergenerational Center. And it's open Monday through Thursday from 10.30 to 4.30. And we're hoping, starting in 2019, we can extend our time there. OK, I'll just right. pass. Thank Good you. Job, Thank you. It's worth it. Anybody else wish to speak? OK. We're supposed to, by the way, limit it to three minutes, but we're flexible. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's no problem. Uh, this should be about 20 seconds. But I'm, my name is David Braverman. I forgot. Oh, address 7 Lakeside Drive, Corte Madera. And um, was there something else I'm supposed to say before I start? That's good enough. Okay. Uh, I'm just here as a parent of a seven-year-old who goes to Neil Cummins, and we're sad that the kids' club is closed, and we're hoping to get the kids' club back. And I, I know there's an issue. That apparently, there's not a room that's ADA com compliant or whatever. And so, <clears throat> um, if there's anything you can do about it, that would be fantastic. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> and um, what else? I think. I told my kid I was coming here today, and he started, I don't know if it was, well, I think it was mostly real. He's, you know, kids talk a lot and say some interesting things, but he said, like, I, um, yeah, tell them I, we really want to back. I, I met some of my first friends there, my best friends, and this and that, and he, he had a great time, and it was, it's good for us as far as the babysitting tool and all that stuff. And um, there's other friends that were going to come to speak here, too. They just couldn't make it. They were parents of kids who went to, so if I don't know um, what else to do, I, I wrote an email a few months ago to y'all, and um, if there's anything you can do, that would be fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else for public comment? Okay, I'll close pu public comment. We have no presentations, nothing under consent calendar. Uh, Park and Rec Director and Commissioner reports uh, we have on J July here, probably should be September for Town Council. The, I actually attended the last town council meeting. They did approve, um, we had recommended $70,000 uh, 
to budget for the basketball courts, they approved that. Um, that went pretty smooth. About the only thing that came up is if we do go to phase two, they would like more information when we go to phase two. But that we told them that wouldn't be for like at least another year or longer. So, Great. did you have anything else to add, Mario, on town council, Mario? Um, no, I was just mentioning the, the hoops themselves, so I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, any individual commissioner updates, events, kid stuff? No. Okay. Um, well, so on the basketball court, Brian, uh, Sean, Will, and I met, and so um, with Brian working through microphone. Oh, sorry, not used to that. Anyway, we were uh, we met uh, was it maybe a month ago or so before. So we're working through planning and logistics. We'll obviously work closely with now DPW and Mario on that. Okay. Yeah, and Sean was it did did attend the um, town, council. town council meeting and spoke at it. Good. So. Okay. Uh, Executive advisory committee. We did not meet. With that, we'll go to Mario. Your reports. I'm sure. Just to, I'm to update the commission on a couple things. Um, as you mentioned, uh, the basketball uh, hoop project. So. Um, we're looking at uh, working with Public Works on timing of that, and we'll report back as to when we start um, looking at putting together a, a construction schedule. Um, and you did mention the phasing of it. So for right now, we're we're really just looking at phase one. Um, and if the commission wants to pursue phase two, it'd be something that we need to talk about in the future to, to plan out. Um, did want to let you know that um, Staff met with uh, representatives from um, FieldTurf, a um, company that puts together uh, artificial um, sports fields. Um, they did the work at Redwood and Marin Catholic, um, Larkspur, um, Park and Rec Department over at Hall, um, and had a really great meeting with them talking about the East Field. And they're putting together some options for us to look at in terms of developing that field into an, um, a synthetic field. Uh, we did talk to him a little bit about timing, um, time of the year, um, and we are looking at working with the school district. Um, Todd's looking at working with the school district on that to uh, to look at funding sources. Um, nothing set right now, but the conversation is going, and it's uh, actually looking pretty, pretty good, pretty optimistic about about that. And we're looking at prices and plans for that because there is some options um, on how to maximize the space um, in different ways um, in terms of how lines are painted for what sports and how they're oriented. So I'm looking at some different options there. Um, also, I did want to mention that we have um, had a lot of interest in uh, Skunk Hollow Mini Park, um, and we are going to be looking at putting together some community meetings and some outreach uh, along with Public Works on how we can improve that, that playground and that park. Um, so that's something that we've also talked to um, a landscape architect and kind of recreation consulting company to look at you know some options for playgrounds and how we'd go about working that. So we're we're looking at some different options on how to present that to the commission. Um, but that'll be coming up as well to reach out to the community to get some feedback from them um, on improvements there and start putting some numbers down on what we can do there. Okay, and then any kind of community workshop that probably wouldn't occur to, towards the end of the year, right? Yeah, I if, think if I then. think we looked at if, um, I think we sketched out that if we were to be able to schedule it, it would, there'd probably be one community workshop if we could do it before uh, the end of the year. All right, yeah. one, one thing I suggest tomorrow is if we can do one at Aegis because um, they have community rooms that we can use because it's right in that neighborhood. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, sure. Um, also, want to um, let everybody know that as as you receive the the doodle, we are putting together um, this programming group uh, workshop. Um, so I encourage you, if you haven't already, to put in um, your availability for our first meeting, um, which we're looking at. One of the options was tomorrow, but we're looking at probably the second um, October eighth or October fifteenth. I think are the the dates that I think the most people have responded to. So we're looking at putting together. Um, a meeting for um, a group to talk about different programming ideas for um, the Park and Recreation Department, for the Inter Intergenerational Center, um, for the park in, in general. So um, looking forward to some good feedback. And it's going to be our initial meeting, so um, we'll kind of try to outline a little bit on how we'd like to see um, 
the ideas develop and how the group's going to work together. Um, and Kids Club would certainly be part of that conversation or some sort of after-school program. It would be, we'd look forward to including that as part of the conversation. So uh, hopefully um, you're all able to attend. Um, and with that, I think I'll, oh, I wanted um, uh, Recreation Supervisor Hernandez to update you on the chili cook-off. So as uh, you might know that we had a, a chili cook-off. There you go. Um, a chili cook-off on um, August 18th. And that we had uh, about over 100 people show up for it with uh, 15 cookers. Um, we already have a request for to do it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there how you about go. that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've already had a request for to do it again for next year. Um, one um, idea was floated that we need to have a um, People's Choice Award because some of the people thought that they were going to be able to um, vote for the chili um, tastings, but they we actually had just uh, three judges, and they were the ones that picked the uh, three winners. Uh, we had a group from the uh, Redwood High School won, I believe they won third place. There was a father-daughter team that won second, and then uh, Ryan, not Ryan Fisher, uh, one of the fire department uh, men won uh, first place. Uh, the band was awesome, got a, a bunch of great uh, compliments on bringing them back for uh, next year, and so the plan is to bring it again next year. And the best part about it is that it did not cost the town a cent. <laughs> we had, I, this is the first year that I went out and got sponsorships. And so all the money that was brought in through the chamber and we're in Acura, um, a chiropractor um, thrive down the street and then um, one other uh, town center. The, the money covered everything from staff time to promotions to everything. So it was a, it was a great event and the weather you know, held up nicely. So hopefully we'll do it again uh, next year. So if you have any questions. Any questions? I have an idea. Sure. Um, I know the Redwood and Hall choruses like to get involved with that kind of stuff. Um, maybe you could try and set up a collaboration maybe between the band and the chorus to get students involved. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was the, the best part was that originally it was the um, Freshman Girls Bringing the Heat was the name of the, the group. <laughs> but then a few boys were added, so they had to change the name. Um, <laughs> But it was, it was really cool to see the, the, the freshmen, you know, coming in and, and participating. It was, it was really nice to see them uh, there. Yeah. So. Thanks. Um, Dave, do you have any updates that you want to talk about? Well, I may as well. I may as well um, update you. And this is really hot off the presses. Um, the flyer that I um, sent to you is right from Erin Duggan. We had talked about her making a presentation tonight and it got delayed. Um, so she's going to be on, t on tap for the presentation on October 22nd. And she was a little worried about uh, teen participation in the developmentally disabled dance. But uh, in talking to her, she had 30 to 40 kids, teenagers at the last dance. Um, I think one of the, she has a steering committee and one of Cambry's cohorts is on that steering committee. So she's on her way. Um, Mario and Brian and I are meeting with uh, Dick Whitley and Nick Stone this Thursday to talk about overall programming, about um, things we can do together more and we're gonna iron this out a little bit more. So Aaron will be here in October to make the final presentation. So I've delayed my final report to coincide with that. Um, we're still looking at staffing issues, uh, capital improvement projects, and um, again, cooperation with uh, the Larkspur staff, which will be included in my final report. So, unfortunately, I've only got six weeks left, approximately, so uh, it'll be sad. No more extensions? Think. No more extensions. <laughs> I think I've worn out my welcome with Todd, to be honest. Not with us, don't worry. No. You can come anytime you want to. Just kidding, Todd. <laughs> Um, but that's all I really have tonight. Um, I'm really excited about this. I'm sorry for the last minute um, notice, but this will be give you give you a preview of what Aaron's going to be talking about.
Thanks. Any questions? Mar I got a question for you. Do you have any update on the green room? Yeah, actually, I was, I was going to mention that. Um, actually, I had a, I've had a, a couple of really constructive meetings with um, our architect and town engineers um, over the past um, week, five days, actually. Um, and everything is um, probably a lot less complicated than we maybe previously anticipated. Um, we've talked to um, the building officials. We've talked to the fire department um, to kind of iron out some concerns we had about uh, the room in general and, and how it's laid out and egress and you know sort of building codes and standards but um, it's uh, it's looking like it's going to be a, a fairly straightforward process um, the architect is uh, is working with our town engineer to um, look at you know the structure of the building itself and because we are looking at changing the, the occupancy use of the, of the of the facility itself so um, but it all looks pretty straightforward and it looks, you know, Jared, I met with Jared today and, and talked to our architect and, um, we're looking at, um, you know, nobody's really batting too much of an eye at our, our targeted date, which was around Thanksgiving and early December. So Thanksgiving to have it finished or to start yeah, to, to have, have it finished. finished. Yeah. So working with that in mind. And then do you have any update on soccer? Soccer's in full swing. Soccer is in full swing. <laughs> <laughs> it is happening. <laughs> Um, the first uh, first three weeks have gone really well. Opening day went really well. Um, Frank Bernardi, who um, I'm actually looking at um, our calendar to see when he can come in and kind of give you a um, little mini update from his from his perspective. Um, we do have some items that um, sort of internally that we need to work out with him and staff in terms of just process and registration and organizational stuff. But um, probably after the first of the year, uh, maybe towards February, we'd be looking at. Um, having uh, Frank come in and talk to the commission and kind of do a little brief update and presentation on the last season. Um, but uh, it's going really well. There's a lot of people in the park on Saturdays and Sundays, and it's it's really exciting to see. And Cafe Verde's happy? <laughs> um, I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a chance, come down either Saturday or Sunday. Just take a look at the park. I've been here the, the three Saturdays. It's very impressive. It's pretty impressive, yeah. yeah. Does, that, does that include dogs? <laughs> I, it does. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I didn't look specifically for dogs, no. I'm there all day, every Saturday. <laughs> Three games a Saturday. Wow. It's busy. Okay, any other questions for Mario? Anything else, Mario? That's it for now, unless you have anything. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll move to business items. Uh, 6.1 we've already covered. Uh, 6.2 Summer Playground 2018 Summary Report. Yeah, so I'd like to um, introduce, reintroduce um, our rec supervisor, Brian Hernandez, who's here, and our summer playground 2018 director, Ashley Parrott. And they'll be um, working on the presentation. Nice. Your mic's on? Yeah. <laughs> you see it? Boom. Um, okay, so we're going to do this a little different um, than um, past years. We're going to do kind of a, a joint uh, presentation for it. She's going to, Ashley's going to talk to you about the day-to-day uh, -day operations, whereas I'll talk to you uh, mainly about the, uh, the money side of it. Um, you know, Mario and I and Dave have talked and we all kind of agree that you know Ashley did an amazing job this year with not just dealing with staff but family and and all the kids and it was a, a testament to her how she's taken this program under her wing um, when we had the uh, talent show that we do every year there was a little goodbye Ashley video at the end and it was really great to see the kids leave the seats and just come kind of hug on her and just hang around her it was just it was really 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 cool um and i think the video is online yeah it probably helped that i was bawling too yeah so, <laughs> so there was that too <laughs> um so with that we will start the little slideshow here um okay i will start so i hired i hired rehired um I believe I had 28 and I hired eight new people. So I had 20 returning counselors, many who were with us for the last X amount of years, not just 
last year being their first year. Um, the eight employees that I hired this summer were all on the younger spectrum, which is really nice because that means they'll be able to stay with us and kind of stay with the program um, if they choose to do so. Um, we had a no greater than one to eight ratio of campers to staff. So 100% of the time, one child was watched or excuse me, eight children were watched by one counselor at all times, no matter what. Sometimes it was less than that. Um, I would turn 13 new CITs. CITs are our counselors in training. They're ages 13 to 15, so not campers, not counselors, but they're getting to work alongside with the counselor staff and um, helping us with everything that we do on top of the behind the scenes stuff that they get to take care of. We had two returning CITs for their third year. So the CIT program is three years, so that's pretty cool. So I decided to bring back the original structure that Summer Playground had when I was a camper, which was every hour there was a game and art and a sport going on and you could choose as a camper where you wanted to go throughout that hour. Um, it was like that from 9 to 12 and then we'd have lunch and then from 1 to 4 and then we'd have snack at 4 and then it was free play until pick up at 6.30. So that was kind of nice, it was very free. The kids really do get to have basically a full day of free play. Um, let's see, more time. Oh, we did actually enjoy having the main hall of the rec center open. We did have a lot of, avail of availability in there this summer, which was nice because it gave us an indoor option. We do have the green room or did have the green room as our kind of designated art area. So there always was an indoor facility, but if you didn't want to do art, then you were kind of stuck. Um, but so having that big area was very nice. This one? Mm -hmm. You lied to me. Because <laughs> you lied to me. I did the wrong one. I can't see. Um, so, as I mentioned in my first presentation to you guys, I was going to bring in an electronic sign-in, sign-out system. I did manage to do that pretty successfully. Um, sign-in, sign-out's always kind of complicated one at the start of summer, just if you want to do paper, if you want to do electronic, both have their pros and cons. Um, but like I said, we did eventually figure out that right balance and how to manage those. Um, we did do our weekly parents' corner, so it was basically a weekly wrap-up of any major events we did, what our theme day was, um, just so parents got to have that part from us as well. So it's not when you go, and what'd you do today, or how was your day? Fine, nothing, you know, so it's what you actually get to know what happened at camp that week. We had several new field trips that were very popular so i think that that's just something that needs to stay the field trips need to stay fresh otherwise there's kids who go one year and then they said oh i already went so it's just a ma matter of keeping up with what's new and fun <laughs> so here are some of the numbers um, for 2017. as you can see um, green bray nevado centerfell i'm sorry cordomadera uh, nevado and centerfell were the the top three um, draws. And you also notice that we have um, a weekly drop-in of 84 kids. That was something that we had started up um, in 2017 where we started doing um, daily, weekly uh, drop-ins. So that was an option for parents as part of the full-time. Um, so in 2017, we had 152 uh, kids registered with 84 drop-ins. Um, and that's just weekly drop-ins. That's not the daily drop-ins because the daily drop-ins were a little hard to track because you didn't know what you were going to get every day. Um, so that in 2018, you'll see that the weekly drop-in went to 138. So it went from 84 kids for weekly to 138. And on top of that, our registration went up from 152 to 176 full-time um, residents. And again, also the numbers in Corte Madera, Nevada, and Centerfell were the, the three highest um, groups that would um, attend the event or attend the, uh, the summer playground. And at the very bottom, you can see our numbers kind of fell off from 2013 to 2016 
but then rebounded again um, in 2017 and again in 2018. And, you know, that is a direct, you know, correlation between Lizzie Basiri, who was our director for uh, a year, and also, you know, Ashley, you know, taking the, the bar and raising it a little bit higher. Um, so, yeah, we have a, a good group of people coming, and we intend to have that go again. So here's the big, the big difference. As you can see, in 2017, our total expenditures was over 172,000, with our revenue of 127,000 and some change. 2018, we not only dropped our expenditures by 40, 40 plus thousand, we also increased our revenue by over 19,000, and maybe a little higher. Of that uh, total revenue for this year, 2018, 5,300 were uh, donated from the Lions Club, Beautification Committee, um, Women's Club. Um, so yeah, that, that really helps. And the big number, the reason why the expenditures is down is that um, we changed from a cost recovery model to now to like a percent model. And part of Mario's salary was taken out of the expenditures along with other day-to-day -day expenditures of like office supplies and, and stuff like that. So that also helped with our um, expenditures being lower. And then also Ashley tightening the belt and using what we had in house as opposed to buying a bunch of brand new stuff and it really showed. And then this slide is just to uh, thank, you know, again, Women's Club, Lions Club, and Court of Madera Community Foundation for their continued support. And each year they give a little bit more, which helps a lot because there's a lot of families out there that do need a little bit of help. And anything that and everything that these groups give us is greatly appreciated. Um, it helps a lot of kids and a lot of families, and we really appreciate it. So, with that, we leave it to you for questions. Okay, I have one. Do you want to know why the numbers went up so much this year? Just any inclination why, like drop-ins? <clears throat> I think having, um, so we added not only the weekly drop-in, but the daily drop-in, but we also added sibling discounts. And so we gave a discount up to three kids. I mean, if you had four, you could still get the third kid discount. So you're getting $100 off pretty much each time you register a kid. And that was one of the big things that we, we heard from past parents as saying, look, I've got two kids and it's, you know, it's expensive. So we, we gave them a break. And I think that really, really helped. Um, and plus also the, the program in the past three years has gotten better and better. You know, especially with the people that we've put in place to direct it, you know, they're invested. Like, you know, Lizzie Basiri, she came up through the program, Ashley, and, you know, hopefully we'll get somebody with that caliber of, you know, mentality of wanting to make this program theirs and keep it going. And we have that. I think we have that in place. So. Were any of the full time counselor CITs before? <laughs> they were? Well, Four or five of them. Yeah, okay. Good hand. A small, nice, good handful of them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got a couple. Um, where does the surplus go between the revenue and the expenditures? Uh, to the uh, general fund. To the general fund? Yes. So it goes, it goes back into our recreation center um, revenue fund that uh, helps cut that gap between what we spend and what we make as a department. Okay. And then are there um, any planned changes for the program for next summer? Um, I think one, we are going to be getting a new director. Um, Ashley has gotten a full-time job and she will not, no longer be with us. But we have a few people in mind who have shown interest in trying to keep the, the momentum going. And so that, that's one big thing. The other one is, you know, we are probably not going to do so many specialized summer camps th next year. And Mario and I are going to really put a lot of our effort and our time into summer playground because it deserves it just like as, as soccer does it you know we're gonna we're gonna put a lot of time into it what do you mean by specialized is there like outside of summer playground you mean yeah i i program probably about 15 different camps okay um but a handful of them go because there's so much competition in the area um and we fought or we, we think that it's better to maybe do away with some of those and put more effort and our time into summer playground making it raising the bar just yeah. a little bit every year that kind of thing 
And so what would you need to raise the bar for next year? Um, what can we do to help that? You know, I think it's uh, staff, okay. more staff, um, because that was one concern um, this year that slightly understaffed um, during peak hours, but that's a historical thing. It's, it, we've always been a little bit short staffed during certain times because people want days off, they're sick, they're vacations, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so the idea is to have a few more um, bodies to fill those those empty those spaces. Okay, and it sounds like the summer the director program the director job is a summer job. It's not a full year job. Mm -hmm. And is there opportunity to to expand that purview to make it a full time job in order to be able to keep talent year round? There. Uh, it's something. It's something that we can certainly look at. It's not something we've taken under heavy consideration. But okay. uh, the the part time position. It, it really starts, you know, kind of like in January. Right. So it's something that that's it's certainly outside and then builds up to, um, you know, start of yeah. summer playground. And we do hope to introduce you to a new summer playground director in October, if not November. And this is, I mean, this is a this is a huge success, right? It's a big one for the community. It's making money for the rec department. I'm wondering if there are things we can learn about from summer program about kids club in general and making sure that that it's not just. It seems like there's probably some parallels. Mm -hmm. that. Staff will be working <coughs> with the um, with the group as well. Um, Brian and I will be there as well as Dave for the first meeting. All right. Great. Is the one to eight ratio is that typical? What do you What do you mean? The um, eight kids to one counselor. Mm -hmm. Is that like a normal type ratio? Yeah. So the legal ratio is one to fourteen. Okay. And we've always managed to keep it at one to ten which was what we did last year, but this year we cut to one to eight. Okay. Does that change as the kids get younger? That I don't know. Okay. And you mentioned there are new field trips. What were they that the kids got excited about? We had, is this on? Mm -hmm. um, we had one to rebounders in Rohnert Park, so it's like a giant trampoline warehouse. We did our, and our always, Fat, fat, uh, la, la, la. <laughs> always favorite angel island that one is popular every year so it is one that we um, repeat we took out the jelly belly factory because it was fun but it was a short field trip and we replaced it oh my gosh where else we went to the zoo hmm. we went where else did i take them Good America. Yeah. no yes yeah, scandia, scandia. Yeah. Ice skating year, but Buena, so ice skating and bowling. Yeah, it was a good time. I didn't get to go on any of them. <laughs> so you say, what's the age limit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to stay on site. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that the field trips are a big draw as well to camp because not only do they have, they don't have to stay there all day. At least once a week they can go off because we also have the pool days and um, dark park days, so there's always chances to get away from staying on site. Ashley, you have to mention the Penny Carnival. That was yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so every summer we also have what's called a Penny Carnival. Um, kids bring bags, buckets, hatfuls, whatever of coins, and we bring in jumpies and we do face paint and popcorn and snacks and all kinds of fun little stuff like that where kids will pay 17 cents to play a game or seven cents to jump on the jumpy for five minutes, you know, just kind of to, I don't know, Dave really enjoyed it. <laughs> we, we went kind of all out with decorations this year and I think that that kind of added to the atmosphere. We some for some reason had a lot of parents pick up at that time, which meant there were a lot of parents at the carnival because kids didn't want to leave. So that was a plus too. And Dave walked right out with a whole bunch of stuffed animals. Yeah, <laughs> he was kicking in kids' bags. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, and I got another one for you. Um, Cause you mentioned you have a couple of candidates for director for, I want to say this year or next year. And again, no names, but are those candidates, because it seems like part of the success has been between you and Lizzie, you both grew up in that program. Yeah. So have you looked at candidates, if there's anybody out there that same type caliber, I want to say where they grew up in that program? Yes, I know so. it's kind of hard to find somebody. But. Absolutely, yes, okay. that's, that's what our focus is. Okay, any other questions? The only last thing I have, I come up with the off the wall stuff. 
It's too bad you can't figure out how you can take summer playground and somehow inter interact it with the intergenerational center. Like Carla, you mentioned that you have like seniors, senior woman that, that does reading for kids. It's funny, when she said Angel Island, I go, it'd be great to see seniors and kids all taking a field trip to Angel Island. Well, um, we actually did have kids going on a couple of the uh, readings. When okay. there wasn't a preschool signed up in, in a, ahead of time, I'd bring in a group of like 12 kids and they'd, they enjoyed it. Yeah, so okay. I'd just seems like you somehow interact, but yeah. Okay, any other questions? Or just a a comment, um, my girls both spent a good chunk of their summer there and they really enjoyed it. Um, they really wanted to go on the sleepover, but being five and seven, I didn't feel comfortable leaving them there to sleep with older kids when there wasn't like a division. There'd be some way to have like a, an area for the younger kids to sleep, you know, because they're still sleeping with loveys and, you know, um, are just a lot more naive than you know the kids on the older spectrum so if there were some sort of division like hey this is where the the younger kids are sleeping we've got a couple more counselors there with them then i think you might get more of the the younger kids on the spectrum staying but um they they had a great time and they loved the field trips it's nice it breaks up the week which is good something new anything else Thank you. We appreciate all your work. We're going to miss Ashley. you. Thank you. You're always welcome back. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> okay. Um, I do. I do want to just really briefly mention um, a couple things regarding summer playground. Um, you know, uh, Brian, Brian, Dave, and I worked um, really closely um, with summer playground um, during the springtime, and um, I don't think a week went by without me grilling Ashley on making sure that she hit her target number of registrations. And I know Dave was on her about, you know, daily, daily, um, sign-ins and finding out how many, you know, folks were from Corte Madera or Larkspur or where they were. Cause we really were interested in seeing that, um, seeing the trends that we were going to report to you towards the end of the summer. Um, but, um, but Ashley far exceeded um, our expectations and she met the challenge, rose to it and really put together an amazing program. So I really appreciate her help. Um, I think I've known Ashley since she was eight years old, if not before. So um, it's pretty amazing to uh, to be here working with her, and um, and I really appreciate her help and, and with the program. So and with her and Brian um, working on it has been really really special. So I appreciate all her help. I'm gonna miss her. I I also want to add to that. I've been um, with a break once I left here, but I was involved in summer playground since 1982, 1983, and Ashley was is and was the best director that I've seen, even going back to the 80s. She just is unbelievable, and she's going to make a great doctor. Again, thanks, and good luck to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving 6.3 review and discussion of 2018 Fall Park and Recreation Survey. Um, sure. So as uh, the commissioner recalls, we um, have... Um, talked about this survey for probably a few months now and um, staff put together um, just a brief list of questions uh, questions that came to our mind we also included um, the survey questions from the 2007 master plan and this is something that we're hoping um, to get uh, some good input from the Commission uh, we'd really like to include um, questions that the Commission would like to see we're obviously trying to focus on programming um, we, if the commission recalls, actually, I think Fred and Emily, I think you guys were the only ones here when we did the, um, we did a, a facility survey uh, maybe about six or seven years ago. Um, you're aging us. <laughs> well, um, which was successful, and we and we got a lot of good information um, about the park and our facilities. But um, we'd really like to revisit uh, the programming aspect of. Um, of what the uh, the community center does, and of course, this is feeding into information that we're going to be um, combining with our discussions in our programming workshop. Um, and I know Age Friendly has uh, a survey that they did, and we, you know, looking forward to hearing information from them when we get together about you know different programming successes. Um, so we're really looking forward to working with the commission to put this out. Um, you know, we're ready to um, to send it out actually after the next. Um, October meeting, but we look forward to, to a discussion tonight and at the next meeting as well. Um, 
to look at some questions and really get a sense um, from the commission what uh, what we'd like to see and what questions we'd like to put towards the community. I think also something that's important is how we um, send out the survey. Uh, if it's something we're looking for, um, everybody in our database, if we're looking at quarter mid-air residents only, if we're looking at quarter mid-air Larkspur only. Um, so I think it's something that's important that uh, the commission should discuss and um, give some direction to staff, it'd be great. Okay. Uh, questions from Margo before we open up for public comment. So do I have this right? We'll, we'll cycle, this will cycle through another commission meeting? Yeah, we'll, we'll be finalizing it at the October meeting. Um, okay. I, I won't be at that meeting. Brian will be running that meeting, but we'll we'll be um, finalizing the questions um, to put together in a survey monkey to, to get out within a week to 10 days after that meeting. Okay. And I have one question, which I think I may have asked you this before. If you send it out to Quarter Madera Larkspur, when you get those responses back, you can't segregate out Quarter Madera versus Larkspur residents, right? Unless there's a question in there. Unless, there's, the a, market. unless there's a question that says, where do you live? Unless we only send it out to Quarter Madera residents or right. Larkspur, or we send it out, we send out two different surveys, for example. You know, we could do that and we could call it survey one and survey two or whatever it is, but um, we certainly be, would be able to do it that way. But other than that, it would just be answering the question, where do you live? Okay. What city do you live in as part of the survey? Okay. I, mean, I don't think people would have a problem answering that question. So I, I think why wouldn't we just send one survey to both Quarter Madera and Larkspur? Just ask uh, I, it's, I mean, that's what it, seems yeah, the most efficient fine. way to do it to me. Any other questions for Mario? I'll open up for public comment. Any public comment? I'm looking at those two, not you two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'll close public comment. Go ahead. You should have to use the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, what I would suggest, um, and I agree with you, too, completely, Emily, that, you know, it's much easier to send out one survey, but um, I would suggest that when they start it, that they indicate whether they are Corte Madera yeah. or Larkspur. I think it should Definitely. be looked at two separate ways. Yeah, otherwise it seems like the numbers could get skewed if it's just in one. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay, with that, I will close public comment, bring it back to the commission. Um, so it sounds like what we need to do is just go through the survey, get to you via email or call you saying, hey, we have changes or stuff we'd like to see in here between now or within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I put some very... Um, brief drafted questions that, you know, were probably more on the customer service side. Um, but, you know, happy to discuss, you know, questions now. And um, perhaps this is something that um, the commission can give, give us some feedback as well. Then we can also um, have the executive advisory or executive um, committee meet um, to discuss as well. But I think, um, you know, getting a really healthy list of questions that uh, we can filter through um, to put out to the community. I don't, you know, how long we want to make it to is question. You know, I don't, I don't think we want to make it too long, but um, shorter is better sometimes. Yeah, you know, maybe 15 to 20, 25 questions would be probably the most that I'm thinking about, but it was certainly something that, you know, we're open to discuss. And, you know, I think it's important that the commission um, opine on that. Okay, so we'll try to get back to you again if you have questions, you want to add anything or any other just general questions. I would say try to get Mar back tomorrow, maybe within the next two weeks or so. This way he's not pushing up the deadline for our next meeting. Um, yeah, and it'd be great if we could do that and then have uh, an executive um, advisory. advisory meeting and then also maybe uh, time that with um, doing it before our programming workshop meeting. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Mario? Okay. Uh, 6.4, discussion of possible action on animals in the park ordinance. Do you just want to give a high-level overview of this? Um, <laughs> on on the report or where the commission where the commission stands and where what direction we need to go. All right, let me do this. Um, I asked Mara to put this on. We've had discussion. I think the last couple meetings. And correct me if I'm wrong. Right now, the the ordinance for all parks in Quarter Madera is no animals. Period in parks. That's on or off leash. No animals are allowed. I know we've had, um, I want to say, some issues, especially on soccer days, with a lot of people bringing dogs into the park on leash. 
I know some of the commissioners have seen people with dogs off leash. Um, I think Mario actually reached out to San and Selma and Larkspur, and their ordinance allows dogs in parks on leash. So one time we were looking at actually aligning that ordinance up with Central Marin Police Authority because it just makes it easier for them to, um, to enforce. So again, we've cycled through, I think it's probably longer, two or three commission meetings. So I wanted to bring it again because I like to close things out. So either we can go the, well, there's a caveat to this, but we can either go the direction of taking no action and just flat out dies. We can always bring it up again. We can recommend to town council to um, amend the ordinance and allow dogs in the park on leash. I think those are about the only two directions we can go. The one caveat with this is we're missing two commission members tonight, and I know both of them were somewhat vocal on this. They are. So the other thing we can do also, not to make this more complicated, is to table this for next meeting. Um, but I, again, I just want to make sure we do bring closure to it. So under that, everything I just said, I'll bring it up to discussions or questions from us and then open it up to the public, if there are any. I think the commissioners that are absent would be uh, upset if we voted tonight with, because they, I know they feel strongly. So I would recommend that we wait until October. Okay. Any other comments? I mean, and my, my perception is we're really, we're split on the commission. Right, right. <laughs> so we don't have a consensus. So let's wait till October when at least people are here. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. I'll open up for public comment. I don't know if anybody has any comments. No. Okay, with that, I'll close it. So we'll table it until next meeting. Okay. Thanks. Uh, 6.5 approval minutes of July 2018 meeting. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? Yep. Are there any additions, corrections, changes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion? Okay, go ahead and call for the vote. Uh, Commissioner Elson? Uh, that's right, she wasn't here. I'm sorry, <laughs> Vice Chair Janowski? Yes. Chair, Chair Kasisa? Yes. I'm sorry. Commissioner Miles? Yes. <laughs> okay, so moved. Uh, routine other matters, future agenda items. We have skateboard park rules. If there's anything anybody wants to have on the next agenda, either let Mario or myself know. You can just shoot us an email, and we'll make sure it gets on there. So the other, other items would be um, the animals in the park ordinance. Um, There'll be a presentation from Aaron Dugan on the special um, needs, wrecking dances, and um, perhaps at that point, um, Dave will have his final report ready for the commission okay. before going to council. And then if we after. do your report, that should be under business items? Yeah. Okay. Given the public comment, should we put Kids Club on there for next time, or do we not? Um, unless it's a business item that we're going to discuss we and take some kind of action on it then it wouldn't come under business items. Okay. We can, you, we can always do the thing where we know we ask Mario if there's any updates or anything okay. else going on with Chris and, and do it that route. Okay. But yeah, mostly the business items, it's mostly if we have to take action on something. Got it. Okay. I think, um, I think there's, there is potential for, may, maybe we don't describe it as kids club, but um, the discussion of after school programming, I think that that's going to come um, kind of full circle with our programming workshop group. Um, so I think that's something that maybe um, we'll be working with, you know, through that group, and we can report back to the commission. Um, I doubt that we'd have anything prepared f out of that mm -hmm. meeting for the October meeting, um, but maybe just, you know, Brian can give an update as, as if you are not able to attend. Um, but I think the the purpose of that that workshop group is also to discuss um, after school enrichment opportunities as well as childcare. That, that's that's part of it. So something that would come out of that group. Okay. Mario, do you want to talk about after school? Oh, yeah. When does that start? October. Thank you for reminding me. It's this count as the first one October. So October 2nd or 3rd? Um, October 2nd, I think. <laughs> um, um, the Intergener Intergenerational Center is offering um, an after school um, early dismissal day painting class, um, and it's with the same. Yeah, it's with our same painting instructor? Yeah. Uh, so, who, paint, so she's doing paint and sip with kids? Right. Paint and sippy cup. <laughs> Milk. <laughs> she had, um, she, she's wonderful. And, and we had um, 
they had a lot of success with the art program um, over the summer. So um, in terms of that being an addition to um, our after school programming through the IGC um, on our early dismissal Wednesdays. So we're looking forward to that and seeing how successful that is. But she's really great. <laughs> <laughs> We'll sneak you in at the end. Yeah, it, it begins the first Wednesday of October, and it's from 2 to 4. So for the kids um, in the schools, it kind of, our strategy was to kind of help out the parents or caregivers or whatever, that they would have enough time to get from either uh, Neil Cummins or Hall or the Cove over to the Intergenerational Center. And, and as Mario said, um, Deborah did a program for, the, for kids um, uh, during the summer, and it was really, really successful. So anyway, yes. Um, or would they, everybody be responsible for getting themselves there okay, independently? Well, as we had planned right now, it, a lot of the older kids would be able to just cross, just cross the, the lawn. Yeah. But um, I can check with the principal. I know that she was very supportive of having staff walk kids over for uh, storytelling. Yeah. And so perhaps she might be able to get an older kid um, to walk the kids over. To buddy up and walk. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. But, you know, hopefully from the cove, um, there might be one parent that can pack all the kids into an SUV or something to get them over. Okay, great. Anything else? Okay, with that, we will go ahead and dismiss. Thank you.